in this lesson, we want to talk about the half angle identities. All right, so we're going to wrap up our section now on the trigonometric identities and get ourselves prepared for solving trigonometric equations. But before we do that, we need to talk about these half angle identities. So let me quickly go back to our handout. So we have all of our trigonometric identities listed here. So these are the ones we've already talked about. Let me just keep scrolling down here. We're going to come down to all the way down where we have these half angle identities. OK, so you see you have ones for cosine, sine, you have three for tangent. Again, something you need to basically memorize if you want to go quickly through these problems. But in a lot of cases, they're going to let you have these handouts. So it's something you could just refer to back and forth. OK. So I'm going to come back to these when I need them. The first one I'm going to need is this guy. So you can pause the video and write it down or you can have your handout, whatever you want to do. But the cosine of some angle A over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of A over 2. Now this plus or minus here is there to tell you that you want to take the appropriate sign based on the quadrant that you're in. Remember, cosine is going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 4. OK, so let's go ahead and minimize this. Let's go to the first problem here where we're told to find the cosine of 67.5 degrees. Now, before I start, let me just put this off to the side. Let me put my identity here. So the cosine of, let's say, a over 2 is equal to we have plus or minus. You have the square root of you're going to do 1 plus the cosine of this a over you're going to have 2. OK, so let me just slide this down just a little bit. So this is what we're going to be using here. So basically, if I want to write this angle here as some angle over two, I would first multiply it by two to figure that out. Right. So 67.5 times two is going to give me 135. Right. So I would say this is equal to the cosine of 135 degrees over two. OK, so now this guy right here matches my format right here. OK, so I can use my little identity here. So let's just put equals here and I'm going to put since we're trying to find the cosine of 67.5 degrees. Remember, it has nothing to do with this guy that's being divided by two. This is what we want here. OK, so this angle right here is going to be in quadrant one. So we know cosine is positive in quadrant one. So we want to use the principal square root. So I'm going to say this is equal to the principal square root of one plus the cosine of here's where it gets tricky. This is a this is a OK, so you want the cosine of one hundred thirty five degrees and then over two. OK, so this is what we're going to be figuring out now. Hopefully at this point you've memorized the unit circle, but if you haven't, I have it here. So basically, if you go to one hundred thirty five degrees and you look at your X coordinate here, this is going to be the cosine of one hundred thirty thirty five degrees. So you have negative of the square root of two over two. And all we need to do is replace that here. OK, and once you have that, it's basically just a lot of simplifying. OK, so let's just put the square root of one plus. Again, this is the negative of the square root of two over two and then all over two. And I should probably make this a little bit bigger so it encompasses the whole thing. Let's continue this over here. So the quickest way to do this, in my opinion, you could get a common denominator there, but I'm just going to multiply by two over two. OK, so two times one over here would be two. Let me make my square root symbol and then two times you'd have negative square root of two over two. The twos would cancel. So you're basically subtracting away the square root of two. So I'm going to put minus the square root of two and this is over two times two here is four. OK, so we can quickly simplify this by realizing again, you could write this as the square root of two minus the square root of two over the square root of four. And we know the square root of four is two. OK, so I can come down here and let's finish this up and just put this as equal to the square root of two minus the square root of two. You can't really do anything else there over the square root of four is two. OK, so that's going to be your exact value if you're looking for the cosine of sixty seven point five degrees. All right, let's take a look at a similar problem. Now we're going to have the tangent. So we have the tangent of seven pi over twelve. And for this one, again, if you get radians, if you're really good at working with fractions, you can do it in this way. I always just convert these into degrees because it's just easier for me. OK, so I'm going to first say we have seven pi over 12 times again to convert this. You want to put pi in the denominator. And you want to put 180 degrees in the numerator. Always remember that 180 degrees equals pi radians. OK, so this is your unit fraction. It's basically equal to one and we can use this to cancel. So this cancels with this. 
and 180 divided by 12 is 15. Okay, so you can just cancel this out and put 15. 15 times 7 is 105. Okay, so this will end up giving me 105 degrees. So let's erase this real quick. And I'm just going to put that this is equal to the tangent of 105 degrees. And then I'm just going to double this number, okay, because I'm going to use this half angle formula. So I'm going to say this is equal to the tangent down here of 105 degrees times 2 is 210. So 210 degrees over 2. Okay, so which formula do we want to use? Let's go back to our worksheet. So you have several here to choose from. You can pick this one right here. I think it's probably the easiest. The tangent of A over 2, there's no square root symbol to work with. It's the sine of A, so the sine of whatever this is up here, over 1 plus the cosine of A. So let's go ahead and write this maybe off to the side. We have that the tangent of A over 2 is equal to, again, this is the sine of a over you have one plus the cosine of a so what do i want to do here again this is going to be what i'm plugging in for a here and here and here okay so basically i would say this is the sine of 210 degrees over you have one plus the cosine of 210 degrees okay so we don't need this anymore i'm just going to erase it for room okay and then i'll just put equals here what is the sine of 210 degrees? Let's go back to our little unit circle. So you have the sine of 210 degrees is negative one half, and you have the cosine of 210 degrees is negative square root of three over two. So let's now plug in. So the sine of 210 degrees is negative one half, and then this is over. Let me scroll down and get a little bit of room here. So again, this is over one plus, what's the cosine of 210 degrees? It's the negative of the square root of three over two. So let me put minus here instead of plus. So the negative of the square root of three over two, okay? So now all we really have to do is simplify this guy. Pretty easy overall. I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by two. So this gives me what? This is gonna cancel, right? The twos would cancel. And I just have negative one up here. And then this is over. Down here, two times one is two. And then minus two times this guy right here, the twos would cancel. And you would just have the square root of three. OK, now you don't want to leave this this way because you don't ever want a radical in the denominator. So you need to rationalize the denominator. So let's put equals over here and I'll put negative one over two minus the square root of three. OK, remember how to rationalize this when this guy is basically two terms. You want to use the conjugate, right? So the terms would be the same. The two would be the same and the square root of three would be the same, but you're going to choose the alternate sign. OK, and the reason for this is when you go through and do the foil down here, you're going to have those middle two terms drop out. So you're just going to have the first guy squared minus the second guy squared. OK, so let's go ahead and put equals here in the numerator. We know what this is going to be. It's just going to make everything negative. So it would be, let's say, negative two, then minus the square root of three down here. You would have the first guy squared. So two squared is four. And then minus the last guy squared, which would be three. Well, four minus three is one. So basically anything over one is just itself. So I can just say the answer here is negative two minus the square root of three. All right, let's take a look at another common problem for this section. So your book will probably say something like finding function values of S over two, given information about S, okay? So in this particular case, we are given that the sine of theta is four fifths. And theta is basically in quadrant two, right? Because it's greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. So you can basically say that theta is in quadrant two. Okay, so we have that information. Now, what if I asked you to find, let's say the sine of theta over two, and then let's say we want the cosine of theta over two, and also the tangent of theta over two. And of course you can get the other ones with the reciprocal identities. We're just gonna do these three because basically once you have those, you can get the other ones easily, okay? So first and foremost, where is theta over two? So theta over two is in what quadrant? So this is very confusing for a lot of people, but basically to determine this, you would just divide everything here by two, okay? Because that would give you theta over two. Now, 90 degrees divided by two is 45 degrees, okay? So that would be less than theta over two, which is also less than 180 degrees divided by two would be 90 degrees, okay? So this tells me that theta over two is greater than 45 degrees and less than 90 degrees. So it's gotta be in quadrant one. So it's in quadrant one. So keep this in mind when you're working with these guys because you've gotta choose the appropriate sign, okay? 
for your trigonometric functions. Now, if we go back to our identities, you'll see to find cosine of a over two or sine of a over two, you need to have the cosine of a, okay, in each case. So that means we first need to find cosine. So let me go to a fresh sheet. We know that the sine of theta is four fifths. And we know that from the Pythagorean identities, we can say that four fifths, which is basically sine squared theta, plus cosine squared theta is equal to one, okay? So what I can do here is just go through and find cosine of theta. So basically we've done this a million times. We know if we square four, we get 16. If we square five, we get 25, okay? Plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. I'm gonna subtract this away from each side of the equation. So this is going to be my cosine squared theta is equal to, this will be negative 16 over 25 and then plus one, okay? So let's come over here. I know that I need a common denominator now, right? So you can just erase this right now and just put 25 over 25. So 25 minus 16 is nine. So I'm gonna say cosine squared theta is equal to nine over 25. So this is where a lot of students struggle. I'm gonna put the cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of nine over 25. Now, which sign should I choose? Let's go back up and let's remember that we're working with theta for right now, not theta over two, okay? So this is where people get confused. They make a sign mistake. So it's theta, theta is in quadrant two, okay? If I'm in quadrant two, cosine is negative, okay? So that means that in this particular case, I wanna choose the negative square root. Okay, so I wanna say the cosine of theta is equal to the negative of the square root of nine over 25. So the cosine of theta here is equal to negative three over five, or you could say negative three fifths. So let's go back up. So let me write this in here. The cosine of theta is gonna be equal to negative three fifths. Okay, so now we have that piece of information. And I wanna find the sine of theta over two, the cosine of theta over two, and the tangent of theta over two. Again, we know that theta over two is in quadrant one. So all of these guys, if there's a square root involved, you want the principal square root, okay? So if I go back to my little sheet, we have the sine of a over two is equal to, again, we just want the principal one, the square root of one minus the cosine of a over two. So let me first write this out. So we would have the principal square root of one minus the cosine of, in this case, this is your a, right? You gotta substitute this. This is theta, this will be theta here, and then this will be over two, okay? So cosine of theta we know is negative three fifths, so I'm just going to plug that in. So minus a negative is plus a positive, so I'm gonna put plus three fifths. Now how you go about doing this, let me make this better, so three fifths like this. How you go about simplifying this is up to you. Of course you could write one as five over five and then basically add your fractions, or you could multiply this here by 10 over 10. It's whatever you wanna do, whatever's quicker. Let's just do it this way. So I'm gonna say 10 times one is 10, okay? And then 10 divided by five is two, two times three is six. So 10 basically plus six would be 16. So let's say this is 16 over 10 times two is 20, okay? So I'd have the square root of this guy. Let me kind of slide this down a little bit kind of working with some narrow space here. So let's come down here and let's put this as equal to, of course, 16 and 20 are both divisible by four. So divide 16 by four, you get four. Divide 20 by four, you get five, right? So what is the square root of four fifths? Well, the square root of four is two and then over the square root of five. Now, I need to rationalize the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply this by the square root of five over the square root of five. And so this gives me two times the square root of five over five, okay? So all that, just to get this answer here of two times the square root of five over five, okay? Now for the cosine of theta over two, we have a similar formula. We come back here. Again, we're using the principal square root. It's one plus the cosine of, in this case, it's theta. Here it's a, but in, in our case, it's theta over two. So let's come back and say, this would be what? The square root of, you have the one plus, what's the cosine of theta? What's well, negative three fifths. So in this case, you don't have the minus a negative, it's straight up minus three fifths. And then this is over two, okay? Let me make this a little bit better and make this longer like this. And let's come down here. So let's say one minus three fifths, let's do this an alternative way. Let's just say this is five fifths, okay? So five minus three would be two. So basically you would have the square root of 
you would have two fifths. If you're dividing by two, you can just multiply by half. So what you'd have here is the twos cancel. And so you'd have the square root of one fifth. So let's erase all of this and put the square root, and I made that terribly, so the square root of one fifth. And of course, the square root of one is one, so one over the square root of five. You need to rationalize the denominator, so this is times the square root of five over the square root of five. And so this becomes the square root of five over five, okay? Let's erase all this, and let's slide this all the way down, okay? So this is gonna be right there. So square root of five over five, and that's probably too tight. So square root of five over five, okay? So for the tangent of theta over two, again, you can come back here and use one of these guys. But again, remember, you can just use your definition of the tangent, okay? So I can just divide this guy by this guy. So I can basically say two times the square root of five over five. If I'm dividing with fractions, I just multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm gonna flip this and I'm basically gonna have five over the square root of five. And so we see that this would cancel, okay? This would cancel and I just get two, okay? So the tangent here is gonna be two. So now we found all of the guys that we were looking for. So if we're looking for the sine of theta over two, it's two times square root of five over five. The cosine of theta over two is square root of five over five. And the tangent of theta over two is just gonna be two, okay? So again, if you wanted to find the other ones, you could flip this guy right here in order to find your cosecant of theta over two. Flip this guy right here in order to find your secant of theta over two and flip this guy right here to find your cotangent of theta over two. All right, let's look at one more problem here, and this just involves verifying an identity. It's just important to get a lot, a lot of practice with this, not only for calculus, but because in this section in trigonometry, it just keeps coming up over and over and over again, and there's no general set of rules to follow for this. It's all just practice, right? So manipulating things, trying to make sure it works out, and then just keep going. As long as you're making proper algebraic substitutions, you will eventually get where you want to go, okay? So if I look at this, I have one plus the sine of beta is equal to this quantity sine of beta over two plus cosine of beta over two squared, okay? So obviously the left side here is much simpler. So I'm just going to work on the right side. Normally you put your equal sign in line here, but I'm going to have to move this all the way over here just because I'm going to run out of room. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do, you remember if you have something like X plus Y quantity squared, this is the first guy squared plus two times the first guy times the second guy plus the last guy squared. Okay. So I'm just going to do that here just to expand this guy out. So I'm just going to say that we have basically the sine squared of this beta over two plus two times this guy times this guy. So this sine of beta over two and then times cosine of beta over two and then plus the last guy squared. So cosine squared of this beta over two. Okay, so from here, you wanna think about if I look at this guy, what do I have here that I can maybe do something with? So nothing really with the half angle identities. You actually have to go all the way back up to the Pythagorean identities. Remember, we used this earlier, the sine squared theta plus the cosine squared theta equals one, okay? So if we think about this, we have sine squared of beta over two, so this is just some angle, plus cosine squared of that same angle, beta over two. So this plus this would be one, okay? So I can just basically say that that's one plus your two times sine of beta over two times the cosine of beta over two. Let me get rid of this marking here because I'm kind of in the way. And from here, you're really thinking about now your double angle identities from the last section, okay? Remember what you're trying to get to. If you look at this, you have one plus the sine of beta. So for this guy right here, we have the sine of 2a is equal to two times the sine of a times the cosine of a, okay? So this is what I have here, right? I have two times the sine of beta over two times the cosine of beta over two. So I'm gonna go and write it like this, sine of two times beta over two, okay? So I wanna put this as, one plus, we'll say, the sine of two times beta over two. The twos are gonna cancel, and look at what I have. I have one plus the sine of beta, okay? And if I go back up, I'm looking for one plus the sine of beta, so bam, we got it. 
And I know these things are kind of hard. I've obviously already worked the problem, so I know what to do. But when you're working with these, don't get frustrated. Again, you can always try to put things in terms of sine or cosine, perform any factoring, perform any squaring, and just get as much practice with these as you can, because when you get to the test, you have to get them done in a reasonable amount of time.